You are loved by your creator. Not because you try to do what's right and succeed or struggle to do what's right and fail. You are loved by the man that created you. Thank you, Father. No wonder we can say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy be thy name. To be respected is your name. Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty. In fact, the scripture teaches very plainly that that name needs to be reverenced, respected, and not to be taken lightly or to use, be used incorrectly. For anyone who takes the name of the Lord God in vain. The Bible makes it very clear. It's a pretty serious sin. It really is. One of the things that I've noticed that really makes me cringe hearing people take the name of God or Jesus and taking it in vain, using it in a cursing style. God loves you. He loves you because he desires to be your father. Being the fact that he's your father, he wants to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus, his son. Because he's your father, our father, which art in heaven, he desires companionship, relationship. He desires... to be close to you. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to refer to him as your father, whereby we call and cry out, Abba, Father. It would not be a stretch to use the word Big Daddy there. I can tell you for sure that God will never abuse you. <laughs> He's more into using you in a good way. He knows that we are a work of a work of art on the canvas of life. He's painting a beautiful picture. Be good if you would consider yourself as God's personal remodeling project. Young man in our congregation. A storage building. He totally remodeled it and showed the picture of the before and the after. That was a remodeling project. That's my life. That's your life. Only God knows what he really can do with your life. All he needs for you to do is give him the building. You're his personal remodeling project.
Actually, he's getting us ready for heaven. It takes some plaster here and some upgrading there. It takes a whole lot of taking the old out. New siding here, new ceiling, new floor. A personal remodeling project. Give him all the pieces, give him permission, give him the building permit. <laughs> Say anything in my life that's unlike you, Father, because you're my Father. <laughs> I give you permission to remodel. A work in progress. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hmm. I remember, I remember when I was just a kid having shooting pains through some parts of my body, legs, shoulder, back. And my mother and dad took me to the doctor, Dr. Empson who examined me and found me to be completely healthy and said, what this boy has got going on is growing pains. My body was expanding. I was becoming more like my father, who was a big man. I was actually growing faster than what I could keep <coughs> keep up with myself. Growing pains. A work in progress. Aren't you so glad this morning that God's a God of second opportunities, second chances? When you don't get it right the first time, aren't you so glad you just gives you an opportunity to try again. Hmm. I wrote down here in a piece of paper, we are not defined by our failures. We are refined by our failures. Failure is never final unless you let it be and just quit and give up. Never. Never quit. The famous words of Winston Churchill in his valedictorian address at his alma mater got up on the platform, great, great leader as he was, took his hat off and laid it down on the platform. said, never, never quit. He looked over the other side and said, never, never quit. Looked over the other side, never, never quit. Put on his hat, walked out. That was a speech. That was a speech. Mm -hmm. God will never give up on you and I unless you give up on yourself. He, he, that won't even make him give up on you, you know. But when you give up on yourself, you limit God because God's a God of life and God's a God of creativity and God is a God of, of second chances and God wants, wants to take all the things that we have failed at and he doesn't want our lives to be defined by those things. He wants to let them be refined refined. He wants us to be growing in him in grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. I really believe the Lord wants us to be. The Lord Jesus wants us to somehow think less of what we do and a whole lot more about what he's already done. The cross, 
the shedding of the blood, taking our sins, paying the debt in full, writing our name down in the Lamb's Book of Life, preparing a place for us in heaven. Awesome. We got an awesome God and a wonderful Savior. To think that he's put the Holy Spirit inside of you and I. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Scripture says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Dwells inside of you. Father has been so good. Little boy is wanting so much to be like his dad. Illustration. But his dad's got a real problem. Because every night after his little boy goes to bed, he tries to get out of the house quietly. He goes to a place where he indulges in sin. And one night, hearing a noise behind him, he looked around and said, Sonny, what are you doing here? The little boy said, I'm just trying to follow in your footsteps, Dad. Whew. There's somebody trying to follow in my footsteps. How important it is for me to follow in the foot, footprints and the footsteps of my God. Because he loved me. Jesus gave himself for me. You'll find his footprints in the book we call the Bible. It's a library, 66 books. Mm. Father, our Father, which art in heaven, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. It's a concept that's even bigger than the smartest man can even conceive. But we have a God that big. And someday, someday, we'll get the opportunity of bowing at his throne and crying holy, holy, holy to the Lord God. Almighty. I say, you have a good day today. Lean in on God today. You don't have to hide from him or hold back from him. He's big enough to understand you. He's big enough to care for you. His heart is big enough to console you and comfort you. Lean in on God today. Have a great day. Rise and shine.